Lagos is Nigeria's nexus of Trans-African Highway, the Sub-Saharan African largest ICT market, hub of West and Central African maritime and aviation, the home to over 70% of Nigeria's industrial investment and 65 of its commercial activities. All these are attributed to its sound economic base, strategic maritime location, and socio-political importance. Let's tell you more about this great city on the City of Lagos TV show. Welcome. You're still watching the City of Lagos TV show. and You're welcome to Health Lagos, where we take a look at the health sector, which happens to be a very critical sector, which of course forms a major part of the themes agenda of Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajude Songulu. The Lagos State Government, led by Mr. Governor, has a very robust healthcare services delivery system, and this is in the bid to ensure a health reform agenda, which is bringing quality health care services to the residents of Lagosians. But there is a critical agency that, of course, plays fundamental role in the health sector. We're talking about the Lagos State Health Facilities Monitoring and Accreditation Agency, EFEMA. Today, we're going to be speaking with the Executive Secretary of EFEMA, Dr. Abiola Ido. Doctor, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Madam, first, let's look at, from historical perspective, what is the vision, the mission, and of course, the mandate of EFEMA? Thank you for asking that um, critical question. Uh, so the health sector reform law, of 2006 established the Health Facilities Monitoring and Accreditation Agency. And uh, the basic objective of the agency is to improve the quality of care the citizens of Lagos State by setting minimum standards for both public and private health facilities and ensuring compliance to the set standards. So the vision of the agency is to effectively promote quality healthcare services. And our vision is to ensure that all residents of Lagos State have access to good quality healthcare services by uh, effectively regulating those healthcare services through monitoring of the set standards, ensuring that they comply with the standards that have been set. All right, thank you very much. Now, how has the agency been able to fulfill its set objectives in line with the themes agenda of Mr. Governor? The basic objective is to improve the quality of care. So um, how do we do that? We accredit, we inspect, we monitor healthcare services. When the administration of Mr. Babajide Olushola Songulu came into being, the agency uh, made some giant strides. One of it was to engage what we call franchising organizations to increase our coverage in terms of ensuring that we meet our mandate of visiting every healthcare facility at least twice in a year. Before we engaged the franchise organizations, we were monitoring healthcare facilities, it may be like 1,300 or 1,500, and then we would inspect 275 healthcare facilities. But since the engagement of this franchise organization, so for example, from January to March this year alone, we have been able to visit 900 healthcare facilities. And some of these facilities have been visited more than once. Some of them have been visited like thrice. So before the end of the year, you know, that means that we would uh, automatically visit more than 3,000 facilities. We like give assurance that when you visit a health facility that has approval from legal state government, then you are going to get quality healthcare services. And so we also encourage citizens to visit healthcare facilities that have our logo. We have a logo 
identifying healthcare facilities that have been approved by legal state government. You're doing a good job, but it's good to find out how have you been able to harmonize, coordinate, and synchronize effectively and efficiently the critical roles of monitoring, registration, and accreditation of public and private health facilities? Because it's quite an Herculean task, really. Those are the basic services that the agency provides. We have various teams that go out on monitoring, on inspection, and recently we're in the process of adding accreditation to the services that the agency would provide. You know, I earlier mentioned uh, that we have franchised our monitoring activities out to reputable organizations. So this has afforded the agency the opportunity to delve more deeply into the other services that had been either too neglected. For example, um, the agency has had our EA Pharma. It's an electronic app, meaning that there is ease of doing business with us. You don't have to come to the agency to start your registration process. Eventually, you would have to visit us. But the initial process of, uh, I want to register, how do I go about it? You can go on our website. And then you have to put in all your documentation. You don't have to come and physically submit it at the agency. You can upload all the documentation. And then what the agency does is check if the documentation you have submitted is adequate at the back end and then would uh, visit the facility for inspection. Okay. For an agency involved in accreditation, monitoring and inspection, your workforce must be top-notch. So what is the training strategy for your team? Since the inception of this administration, the agency has encouraged the staff to carry out capacity building in terms of training. Every Friday, we have training sessions for all the staff on things that are core functions of the agency. For example, I would say that, you know, we interface a lot with the general public. So we have a lot of trainings on how to interface with the public on personal relations. And then for the core staff that are going out on this monitoring and inspection visits, we have had trainings on how they will become assessors. And they have also had trainings on quality improvement. And then we're also working with non-governmental organizations to improve our capacity in terms of carrying out these functions that we do. Thank you very much. Well, in case you just join us, you're watching Health Lagos. And of course, we're speaking with the Executive Secretary of the Lagos State Health Facility Monitoring and Accreditation Agency, EFEMA, telling us uh, the major significant functions and of course activities of the agency. So Madam, for an agency of this nature, looking at uh, monitoring and accreditation, we would like to know what are the yardsticks, what are the criteria that it, the agency use to determine to say yes, health facility A has all it takes to operate. The first thing that uh, you must do as a provider is to show intention and that is you write to the Honorable Commissioner of Health stating that you want to establish a health facility and then the location and the type of uh, health facility that you want to run. That's the beginning and once you have been able to do that you go on our website and then register with documentation but then you there are certain things that you require. So for example if you want to register a health facility, the doctor or whoever is in charge must be qualified medically and also have a license to operate that type of facility that you want to run. And then you must have healthcare workers must be adequate. For example, we have categories of health facilities. If it's a, a clinic, for example, there's minimum requirements even for staffing. You must have adequate nurses. You must have minimum doctors to man the place then, they must have basic equipment for that category or facility that you want to run. And then, in you know, I talked about documentation. In that documentation, you would also document uh, things that would um, give us insight into your processes. 
for the type of facility that you want to run. And then your uh, building, for example, the premises must meet the minimum building requirements. You must have approval for it, fire, service, must be safe enough for admissions and things like that. All those cri criteria, you must meet them. And then apart from that, we want to know that it's a viable business. It's somebody who is resident in Lagos. So we would ask, for example, for the last record of the person who is operating. It must be a citizen that is paying tax. We must know also that you are in good standing with your professional body. So we would also require, I mean, like, a letter of good standing from the professional body. Looking at all these criteria, how many private health facilities or health providers that are fully recognized by EFEMA? As at um, the uh, 28th of April 2023, we have 4,099 facilities that are registered. As an agency established by law, how do you tackle the issues and challenges of violation, non-compliance, and circumventing of rules, uh, guidelines by health providers in Lagos? So the first thing uh, when you talked about compliance is to have a standard. So there is a standard which every health facility must meet, depending on the category. When there are infractions, meaning that in one way or the other, you have, as a, as a facility, the facility has not met that criteria in one area or another. Depending on the level of infraction, we now meet out our enforcement activities. For example, if the infractions are minor, we issue a notice of non-compliance. And then we let the facility know that we're coming back within a certain period, depending on the infraction. And then we'll, we'll, we'll visit. If there's still non-compliance, we issue a closure notice. Our most severe penalty is closure of the facility and then prosecution if there's a need. So in cases where there are quackery and then we also um, frown severely at facilities that are not registered because we have a lot of facilities operating that are not registered. Mm -hmm. Once the person is health care professional, we close the facility and give an opportunity to come and yes, carry out registration. Looking at the very huge number, how do you cope? You know, monitoring 4,000 and even the, for the fact that some unprofessional uh, health provider still survive or exist in Lagos? Uh, as an agency, we also realized that in the past, there was one critical stakeholder that we left behind, which was the general public. So from year 2021, we started carrying out sensitization to the general public, letting them know that they shouldn't visit healthcare facilities that are not approved by legal state. They should visit only facilities that carry the EFAMA logo. That has also helped us a little. And then we also put it out there telling people that if you think that you are going to a health facility, you are not satisfied, or you think that there are quacks in that health facility, we have put out our information out to the general public to say, you can come to us. You don't even need to physically come, that you can send uh, a message to our phone, or you can go on any of our social media platforms to register your displeasure. And would carry out the investigation. So matter for very high professional medical operators or people who are aspiring or prospecting to operate health facility in Lagos, what are the means of reaching out to EFEMA to make more inquiries in order not to uh, violate your, your laws and conditions? For more information, they can go on our website, efama.legostate.gov.ng. There is um, information on the requirements. There is information on the categories of uh, healthcare facilities under our uh, purview. There is also information on the standards that these facilities must meet for basic licensure. And then they can go to our Twitter at Efama underscore L-A-S-G, Facebook at Efama, 
or LinkedIn at a farmer. They can also call us 090 and uh, 081-0416-8588-081-7270-4228. In the course of um, your leadership, Legosians would like to know, since you came on board, what are those very significant achievements of FEMA since you came on board? Thank you very much for asking. Um, first, I would say that it was teamwork. Teamwork and support from the leadership. Since March 2019, we have been able to, number one, uh, initiate the uh, EFR platform, which is our electronic portal, where you can either communicate with us or carry out the registration process online. Then we also had the opportunity of actually having a physical office so that we're more effective and we're more efficient as an agency. And government has also provided us um, vehicles. We have been giving six or seven brand new vehicles since I became the executive secretary. And then, you know, I also mentioned a key thing, critical, the fact that we have been able to franchise our monitoring activities out and it has increased greatly increase the scope of the agency. One of our critical achievements is also the fact that we reviewed our standards. The standards um, had not been reviewed since 2006 when the agency was established, but we were able to review categories of standards between the year 2021 and 2022. We reviewed a total of 23 standards and we included four. So some of those emerging categories so, for example, the aesthetics and cosmetic surgery that is just coming up, we set standards for them as well. And then we also reviewed standards for home care services because we find out that we're now getting a lot of people wanting to establish facilities such as uh, home care services. So we actually uh, reviewed what we add what we had before was very scanty. Also, in trying to create awareness on safety, we celebrated the World Patient Safety Day in September 17 last year, just to create awareness and uh, encourage healthcare providers on patient safety. And we also gave awards this is just to ginger other healthcare facilities so that they too would strive to win that award next year by ensuring that they are, I mean, improving the care that they are giving the citizens of Lagos State. Also, we carry out human capacity development in terms of capacity building on a weekly basis as an agency. And then collaboration. We have deepened our collaboration with our partners, our stakeholders, we have also been able to reach out to the general public. Who are your major critical stakeholders and partners? And how have you been able to synergize and collaborate with them? What has been the symbiotic relationship? Our critical stakeholders, apart from the general public, you know, we have all the associations, the uh, Nigerian Medical Association, uh, Nigerian Nurses and Midwifery's Association, the Association of Medical Lab Scientists of Nigeria. There are a lot of them. And then, of course, our stakeholders. One of the critical ones that we left behind since we have been engaging them actively, which is the general public, since 2021. In 2022, we were able to visit all the 20 LGAs and we carried out awareness storms and then we also visited the leaders of the community just to encourage them that they should visit only facilities that are approved by Lagos state government. And that if they see something like they see facilities that do not carry the logo, that they should inform us so that we can investigate. Or if they have issues or they have um, anything uh, to complain about when they visit our facilities, that they should let us know. Let's look at... Uh 
the very tremendous ways Mr. Governor has been of great assistance to the agency. So how would you see the governor's um, support so far? You, you cannot evaluate my performance without acknowledging the support of the leadership both of the state and of the Lagos State Ministry of Health. It is through the support that we got additional vehicles so that we can carry out our monitoring activities efficiently. The staffing of the agency was improved, even in number, by more than 100%, so that we could carry out our work more effectively and efficiently. And then, of course, I, I, the new office, because this is a new office, yes. We were given a new office so that every staff can sit down and contribute their quota to the state. As a fast-growing populated city and considering the pressure on health infrastructure, are the available health facilities or health providers actually enough? If not, are there future plans for expansion? I believe the healthcare facilities that we have currently in Lagos is enough because Lagos State has the highest number of healthcare facilities, both public and private, in Nigeria. What we are working on is to ensure that the available healthcare facilities are providing good quality care for the citizens of Lagos State, for the residents of Lagos State, and then also ensuring that they are providing safe care to the citizens of the state. It's been a pleasure uh, having you on the program. And of course, uh, it, it will be quite important to know uh, what are your challenges as an agency <laughs> and how you've been able to mitigate against them. Part of our challenges was the fact that there were so many healthcare facilities in Lagos with so little staffing to actually carry out. And our mandate is to ensure we visit these facilities at least twice in a year. So engaging these franchise organizations has mitigated that because it has increased our capacity, increased our scope to actually carry out our monitoring activities. When these activities are carried out, the reports are given to the agency. So what we do is when there is a red flag, when there are issues that we must attend to immediately, we go out and attend to it. And then, of course, we confirm their activities by doing spot checks. Another major challenge is um, the issue of um, sometimes we get resistance either from the healthcare facility or sometimes from outsiders who are trying to quote unquote assist the health facilities in preventing the agency from actually carrying out their duties. And we that is we usually mitigate that by enforcement. So we get enforcement agents when the need arises so that the staff are protected. And then of course add to reach areas. There are still some areas in Lagos that are very difficult to reach. So um, we're we're working on that. So how would you describe or rate the level of compliance in Lagos? For those facilities that are registered, I would say give or take 60%. However, the compliance, it's moving gradually. It's improving. It's moving. We've seen a lot of progress. But there is a drawback in that level of compliance because of the death of healthcare workers. So that's, as, that's, a, that's a major drawback. It's a major drawback, the death of healthcare workers now. The Jaqua syndrome. It's a major drawback for, for the private sector. On a final note, what's your candid advice and, of course, um, charge to health facilitators, health providers across board and to Lagosians in general? For healthcare providers, um, register your facility because it is when you register that facility that we're able to discern what type of service you are providing. It is then we can say you are not providing service illegally because according to our law, once you are not registered, you are illegal for the general public. Very important. Visit only facilities that have a pharma logo and if you see something, if you believe that you have received care in a facility that is unwholesome, 
then you say something by getting in touch with us on our social handles. You do not even have to, we don't need your name. Just let us know and we would investigate. I want to thank you very much, Dr. Abiola Idowu, for coming on the program. The Executive Secretary, Lagos State Health Facilities Monitoring and Accreditation Agency, EFEMA. She's been able to give us a very clear insight on the major achievements and challenges of the agency. And to a great extent, the health reform agenda of Lagos is actually getting the desired boost from FMA. And like you said, for every accredited health facility, it must have the FMA logo. If it doesn't have the logo, then you can reach out on the social media handles on the screen. And of course, don't also forget to call officials of FMA. Well, that's it on Health Lagos on the City of Lagos TV show. The show will continue in a moment. There are so many factors that are responsible for debt in businesses. Number one, competition is big. Number two, power is not available because a lot of businesses, if you are establishing in Lagos, you have to provide for yourself the power. The same thing you are paying tax for, you have to go and provide them for yourself. And another thing is informal harassment. So if you're doing a, building a, a business in Lagos, you need to be tough. Power is one of it. Also access to funding, because, because somehow things are a bit expensive. Number one, when you look at the environment in terms of time, so many things consume the time of people in Lagos, most especially the traffic condition. Uh, you cannot be productive while you are stuck in traffic for two to three hours every day of your life. Traffic and security are one of the major issues we have in the only business in Lagos. You pay a lot of tax. Then I believe that getting people to work in Lagos is really hard. As the economic capital and major port of Africa's most populous nation, the City of Lagos TV show will continue to expound and project the great potentials and future prospects of the City of Lagos on TV Nigeria. Thanks for watching.